Welcome and thank you for tuning in. In this episode, I'm going to build a vacuum pump that can be used for veneer uh, vacuum bagging or uh, for a, a vacuum hold down for CNC. A lot of uses. Now, if you've watched my previous uh, videos where I've done vacuum bagging, I used a Venturi type pump where my air compressor provided the compressed air uh, to go through a Venturi pump that then drew the vacuum. Uh, that's, that's all works very well, but it does require a compressor and uh, running hoses and so forth. So when I came upon a, uh, a used uh, positive displacement rotary vane uh, vacuum pump, I thought, well, let's go ahead and see if I can uh, make this work. Now, when I built the uh, Venturi pump, I used the plans, and uh, most of my parts came from joewoodworker.com. So that's the place I went back to because... On his website, he's got plans for building this particular rig as well. So I went ahead and ordered all the parts I needed from him. And uh, using his plans and a few modifications, I've gone ahead and assembled this. And I wanted to show you how that works. So just a quick overview. Here's the vacuum pump. It pulls vacuum through a filter, through a shutoff valve called a MAC valve, through a check valve that doesn't allow any loss of uh, pressure when the or vacuum when the pump stops, through a hose into a manifold that then goes into two big reservoirs made out of PVC pipe, and these simply store vacuum, uh, you know, negative pressure. There's a, there's a pressure gauge on here so I can see how much vacuum I have, and then connected to that manifold is a shutoff valve and a hose, and I've got the hose wrapped up right now, but the hose can then go to uh, the vacuum bag or the uh, or the vacuum hold down. So that's that's a break, basic overview. Now let's uh, let's show you how it's built. I'm drilling a seven sixteenths inch hole into the end caps here so that I can then tap it for the uh, brass fittings. Now I'm tapping the holes in the ends of these caps to fit this brass fitting. I'm using a 1 quarter 18 national pipe thread tap. Just chuck it up and it's a pretty easy tapping into plastic. The glue up of the reservoirs is just standard PVC gluing, and by the way, you're using a uh, solid core pipe, not the foam core, because a lot of pressure on this. Um, I don't know if the foam core will be able to hold it or not. So just prime the, prime the pieces, and then go ahead and put on the PVC cement nice and generously. In this case, squeeze out is a good thing. I made a couple of marks about how deep this should go. Give it a quarter turn. Make sure it's just the same size as the other one, and it is, so we're in good shape. Just hold that for a minute. Well, now that the reservoirs are glued, it's time to make the manifolds. And Joe makes it real easy. He doesn't only give you instructions, but he gives you pictures. So all you got to do is make it look like the picture when you put all the parts together. So I uh, use a little Teflon tape and some wrenches and we'll be all set. We'll start out with this T going into the, uh, the MAC valve. Try to keep in mind this is under vacuum so you got to be careful that you're not going to suck any Teflon into the system. Go ahead and do all the rest of the parts and we'll be done. And then with the manifold built, I'll just go ahead and attach the reservoirs. Okay, the next step is to make the uh, carriage to hold these parts. And uh, Joe gives uh, some decent plans 
with, with uh, you know, nominal dimensions. You, you, you've got to make some adjustments to the dimensions for your own parts to make it actually work right. But I'm just using three quarter inch ply. We'll go ahead and make two T sections and I'll show you how they get assembled. pieces are cut and machined and drilled and sanded, so now it's time to glue up. This is the pressure switch that uh, turns the pump on and off, and I've drilled a 5 8 inch hole and then mount the pressure switch such that a little piece of black tubing can go between the reservoirs and the pressure switch where we'll sense the pressure. It's important for all the metal parts to be electrically grounded so you don't shock yourself by accident. So I've made up a little pigtail to ground the switch box and I'll just connect that pigtail to the common ground throughout this, the system. Now the vacuum pump itself I held down with carriage bolts. I've got some that come up through the bottom but for the back holes over here I couldn't get to them with a wrench so the carriage bolts, carriage bolts go down through the top. Also I mounted an electrical relay the motor here draws about 5 amps full load, so on startup it's probably going to draw about 15 amps. That's kind of a, a lot, so I've got a relay where the control switch here, the pressure switch, simply causes the relay to pick up or drop out, and the relay main contacts is what carries the current for the motor itself. I wanted to mount this relay in a position where I could get to the screws very easily but also out of the way and later on I'll have to cover this with an insulating material. Okay well I've got everything assembled uh, I used a little shrink wrap around my wiring to kind of make it a little neater uh, did a couple other little mods I made a little cover for the relay to keep my fingers away from the electrical contacts uh, I also uh, Put a little horn on the side here that I can wrap the hose and the, and the wire around. But otherwise, it's basically the same vacuum pump rig that, that uh, you know, I used uh, the plans from joewoodworker.com. And uh, so let's, let's see if it works. I've got it plugged in. Uh, when I turn it on, the vacuum pump should start. Since there's no vacuum in the, in the reservoirs right now, uh, we've got a straight line to the reservoirs and it'll suck vacuum on those reservoirs till I get up to the set off, uh, shut off point for my pressure switch which uh, I set for around 23 inches of vacuum and that will shut the pump off. So let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go. Okay now when that shut off what happened was the pressure switch detected the you know the sufficient vacuum and so it uh, cut power to the to the relay which uh, cut off the pump. The MAC valve shut, the system was allowed to, uh, to uh, blow off its vacuum uh, through this little breather here, so now the pump is uh, just sitting here at atmospheric pressure. Now when the system starts up again, the uh, MAC valve will open but the check valve will stay shut until the pump draws sufficient vacuum. That's what this little auxiliary sub-reservoir is for, to give a little volume that the pump can draw on so it doesn't immediately start up under full load. It lets the pump come up to speed before, the, uh, before it starts really having to suck vacuum on the reservoirs. So, works great, just like advertised, and uh, in the next uh, series of videos I'm going to be using this to, uh, to do some vacuum hold downs for the CNC machine, so I hope you, I hope you tune in. Thanks for watching.